I'm Brian Barron, Senior Manager for the Construction Program at the Ministry of Labor, Immigration, Training and Skills Development. Today we're here at an agricultural building project to review Safe Trust installation. Over the past few years, these buildings have increased in size and complexity. We've seen an alarming trend of collapses due to inadequate bracing and poor planning. In the last three years alone, we've seen at least four critical injuries as a result of this. All of our crew has uh, passed a training program that we have in-house where we talk about trust installation um, so everyone knows their role. Uh, prior to uh, trust install, we'll have a safety talk with all the crew and everyone will understand their roles and know what's ex expected of them. The crane will be coming in, going in and actually setting up in the middle of the building. The truss block will be set up over there and then we'll put on the truss block, brace it really well and then we'll start assembling the trusses one by one. During that time, our crew will be sitting up on the trusses and inside the truss, practicing 100% tie-off with the gear that we have available to them. Truss day is a really exciting event for our truss crew, right? The guys look forward to it. It's usually a, a fun, fast-paced day. The day flies by like that. Um, it's a high energy environment and the guys are generally excited to be up in the air and hollering for lumber. It's really exciting to see the crane all working in harmony with the crew uh, and putting out these large span trusses. I myself have been in the business since uh, 2002. I started as a summer student um, and eventually graduated my way up. Over the years, the safety requirements have changed. Back in the early years, right, the uh, harnesses were on, but they weren't always exceptionally well used, right? But as times go on and the industry has mandated 100% tie off, and we are excited to show you that process in action, making sure that our guys are safe. Our primary goal at the end of every trust day, at the end of every working day, is to make sure that our employees get home safe and safe and sound to their friends and family. Trust day scheduling is a, is a very important uh, aspect of managing a site like this. So uh, these long trusses actually need a special permit in order to get delivered on the road. So our trusses are already on site. Uh, the crane will come in, set up inside, and then once we get the block installed, he'll be swinging out and we'll have team members hooking up the truss. There'll be four points of, of truss connection to the crane, making sure that it's nice and stable. We also have the ability to attach a stiffener bar to the bottom of the truss to make sure it stays stable if we need to. It's an extra safety precaution if we ever have a truss that gets a little floppy or maybe the wind gets up a little bit. So the crane picks up the truss, we'll bring it into the crew, and the crew is ready to receive. A lot of times they're reaching out with their hammers or reaching out with a two by four ready to grab that truss and help guide it in. We'll have a man on the rope guiding the, guiding the truss in as well. And everything is nice, cool and calm. All eyes are on the prize. Uh, when the truss comes in, everyone is essentially ready on their two by four with their hammers. They're ready to lean out and pound in the hand nail. A hand nail. Yes, we hand nail things here um, in this here environment. We love nailers, of course, and compressors. But if you were to equip someone to be up in the trusses and ask them to be 100% tied off, as well as try to maintain their grip on a power nailer, I can tell you right now, the first thing that's gonna fall behind is the safety, all right? They're gonna make sure they don't drop that nailer. Okay, they don't want to get yelled at for breaking a tool and they also want to be productive, right? Everyone wants to be productive. So a lot of times the first thing that falls behind is the, is, is the safety aspect. So here at Post, what we do is we actually pre-nail a lot of our lumber uh, so that they don't have to worry about fishing nails out of their pouch during the procuring of the insulation. They get their lumber all pre-nailed, boom, they can slap it up and away they go. And that way they can then focus on being safe while they work within their environment. A uh, crew member is expected to work within roughly an eight foot radius. So our strapping, our two by four strapping is installed on two foot on center. So each individual is responsible for approximately four two by four straps to carry on down the building. In this way, they all have their area of responsibility so they can stay tied off in the area of responsibility. They are equipped with uh, two anchor points, right? Which they can then attach to the top cord of the truss and then they, they use their self-attracting lanyard to attach that anchor point, which is secured to the D-ring of their harness. They keep two anchor points on them, so they're always tied off to the one. Once they finish the work in their one area, they can walk over, set up another one, tie off to that one, untie off to the other one, get their anchor point, put it back into their belt, and carry on. Here we have a letter from Waddell where we just specify the total lateral X braces that go on the trusses. So at first we'll get the truss drawings, uh, which come with 
all the various reactions that come from each end of the truss and factored forces in all of the web members. And so in our letter, we'll break down each truss and how many X braces have to go in each truss and each member. So on our first column, we'll have the truss name, then the members themselves, which you can then uh, refer back to the truss drawings for. And then we also show the forces for each of those members. And based on whether those forces are in tension or compression, that then decides. We have a specified number of bracing per truss for those, whether it's tension or compression, and then based on the magnitude of those forces. Later on, we'll show the number of X bracing throughout the length of the structure. And this will change based on whether it's in tension, compression, and the magnitude of the, especially the compression force there. And so we'll show on our letter number of X braces that go uh, per member, which you can then tie to, to the truss drawing. Um, we'll also not only have it in our letter, but we'll also show it in the drawing themselves, just so that it's clear where each X bracing goes with respect to the truss. So it's important to follow the drawings because as the engineer, you end up designing very specific locations where those forces have to go, have to transfer throughout the structure itself. And so we're following a load path, and if you start to deviate from the drawings, you start changing the load path. And then if we have a number of bracing, we're expecting a certain distribution along the structure itself, which would then mean that we're relying on a certain rigidity that provides. And if you start deviating from that, then you're changing the rigidity of the structure. And that starts to affect the load path again. There are three significant considerations to take into account when erecting wood trusses. First is access. Use an approved work platform like the ones you see behind me today. And for areas that are harder to reach, use a ladder that's secured at the top and bottom to get the workers up into the trusses. Second is working at heights. Training is of the utmost importance. You must have an approved working at heights training course through an approved provider. You also have to select an approved or an appropriate fall protection system for the work that you're undertaking. And use approved anchor points that have been designed by an engineer while working in the trusses themselves. Last is temporary bracing. The finished bracing alone is not enough to keep uh, trusses up during the construction process. The finished design relies on all of the finishes and materials working together to give it its strength. During construction, additional bracing is required. You should consult best practices on how to brace these trusses as well as the design engineer to understand the best bracing techniques to be used. To help, IHSA has developed guidance called Temporary Bracing for Long Span Wood Trusses. You can visit IHSA.ca and their YouTube channel for more information. Remember, work safe for life.